Hello everyone and welcome to today's New South Wales Business Chamber webinar. The title of today's discussion is Making Your Mark with Country of Origin Branding. We are pleased to welcome our presenter for today, Ben Lazaro, Deputy Chief Executive, Australian Made Campaign Limited. Ben's role at Australian Made oversees the administration and promotion of one of Australia's most recognised and trusted brands. His 15 plus years of professional experience is centred on the development and execution of fully integrated strategic marketing communications programs. This webinar is live and interactive. You're encouraged to participate by posting questions to the presenter which can be typed into the chat box located at the bottom left hand side of your screen. All questions will be answered at the end of the presentation. If you're experiencing difficulty hearing the sound during the webinar, please dial the 1-800 support number listed in the chat box. I'd now like to pass you over to Ben to begin. Thanks very much, Jeff, and welcome everyone. Uh, thank you for coming today and uh, attending this webinar and finding out a little bit, of a little bit more about country of origin branding and specifically uh, the famous Australia Made Australian Grown logo. Just a little bit of overview about the logo itself. As it says there, we're a registered uh, certification trademark, um, which means it's underpinned by a set of rules. That a set of criteria must be met for products to carry it, but we'll talk, we'll talk a little bit more about that later. Um, it's Australia's most trusted and recognised, and importantly, widely used country of origin symbol. Many of you have obviously seen it uh, when you're shopping. I mentioned before, it's underpinned by third party accreditation system, which is very important, which is why it enjoys uh, high levels of trust. Um, and we'll talk about some of the stats around the logo in the presentation. And it's obviously ideal for products that want to ensure or give confidence to consumers that their products are genuinely Australian. It makes the Australian connection instantly and clearly, and that's why we believe it's an effective sales and marketing tool. And if being Australian is important to selling your product, it's a must have. A little bit about the Australian Made campaign itself. Well, our responsibility is to administer and promote the logo. Um, we license products to carry the brand and we also enforce compliance, auditing, and then moving into some anti-counterfeiting uh, actions with some partners. Uh, there'll be some news dropping about that uh, later this month. Very important to acknowledge that we're a not-for-profit organisation and we're not a government body and therefore we don't get money from government. We're not funded by them in any way. So we're essentially uh, funded by license fees, which we use to ensure the integrity of the logo and promote the logo and the businesses that carry it, or the products that carry it, I should say. We're, our board is elected by our 11 govern, governing members, and, and that's the Australian Chamber of Commerce and Industry, along with the individual state and territory chambers, which is why we're here today working alongside the NSWBC. And importantly, we've got the National Farmers Federation as well linked into the organisation. So we've got really strong representation uh, across the business and agricultural communities. Very brief history there, you'll see the evolution all the way back to the 1930s. The green and gold kangaroo though was uh, an invention uh, of the government in 1986. It's gone through a number of different machinations. Uh, before in 1999 the Australian Made campaign was established and we've been administering the logo ever since. As I said, uh, we're funded by licence fees, not funded by government. A bit about country of origin certification. Carrying the logo makes a clear statement to consumers and those consumers may be individuals, they may be business, they may be government. But it makes the statement that the product was produced in Australia and it's important to make that differentiation in the marketplace, particularly for those of you who are in um, business areas or sectors where being Australian is an advantage. So the logo goes a long way to conveying that message, not only here but overseas as well. Hopefully you've seen a lot of advertising or promotion of the logo, whether it's in uh, supermarkets or hardware stores or at airports or billboards. Um, we, we promote a Buy Australian message and also uh, involved in education. So the consumers understand that when they see that logo, all the thinking is being done for them, that the product that's carrying it is indeed a genuine Australian one uh, because it's been third party certified. A rogue blank slide there. So, 
There we go. So what's next? You might have seen uh, the new country of origin food labelling legislation that's making its way into stores. It's uh, compulsory for nearly all food products uh, sold domestically to carry this new information panel. And as you can see from the slides there, that information panel includes the famous green and gold kangaroo, a percentage uh, Australian ingredients bar chart, as well as a statement uh, that describes the above two elements. So this is the government um, initiative, one that we endorse. So we don't administer uh, this part of the program at the moment, but we certainly support it as it's giving consumers more information about the products that they're, they're carrying, uh, the products that they're buying. There's also been some changes to legislation for all products that are uh, looking to make an Australian-made uh, claim. Many of you listening will, will understand this. There's been changes to the criteria for making uh, the Made in Australia claim. Only one test must be met now, and that's has the product been grown, produced or manufactured, and not just packaged or assembled in Australia. And the key here is substantial transformation. Has that product been substantially transformed uh, in Australia? We'll talk about that because it's a, it's a subjective um, uh, interpretation, I guess. You'll see here goods are substantially transformed uh, if they were grown or produced in the country. That's an easy one. This is where it gets uh, can get subjective. Uh, if as a result of processing in that country, the goods are fundamentally different in identity, nature and essential character. They're the three core elements from all their imported ingredients. So you've got to demonstrate that the final product is indeed different in identity, nature or essential character from its imported components. And uh, the example that um, is often being used is if you import fish oil, uh, encapsulated here in Australia, uh, that no longer complies to make a Made in Australia claim. And there's been some recent changes to the ACCC's interpretation of that specific example. And um, we're about to um, launch our policy position on that in, in the coming weeks to provide more clarity to some of those businesses that are looking to make a Made in Australia claim within the complementary health sector. Um, if, we, if we see how that uh, affects the Australian Made uh, claim with respect to the Australian Made logo, this organisation uh, has a policy of falling in in line, or uh, uh, falling in line with the ACCC's interpretation of these kinds of things. Um, there have been times where we've uh, required products to meet additional criteria. Uh, we will never uh, be in a position where we fall beneath what the ACCC requires. So we will change our code of practice accordingly to ensure that. Consumers, which is what it comes down to, have um, some confidence that they're buying genuine Australian products. What about, again, the, the company itself? We've got uh, over 2,700 companies that uh, are currently have products licensed to carry the logo. And as you can see, it's a good news story. The line heading in the right direction there. This is some of the, the really important stats around the logo itself. 99% of Australians uh, recognise the Australian made logo. So they know what it is. We're all familiar with it. And probably the more important stat is 86% trust the logo as a confirmation of country of origin. So really pleasing statistics. Um, any brand uh, I think would kill for those kinds of numbers. And we're very proud to have maintained those over the years. Um, there's not much wriggle room in the 99%, but we always love to push that 86 and try and get that up into the 90s as well. Um, so we don't consider our work done in that area. So why is it a competitive advantage? Um, we think it's, uh, it's an advantage to be recognised Australian, uh, as an Australian product in most markets. The businesses themselves will know whether it's important to them selling or marketing their product, but some of the obvious um, attributes that the logo conveys. It's fresh, healthy and tasty, particularly we're talking about food and, and complementary health. Safety, uh, increasingly becoming important uh, across a number of product sectors, not just the obvious ones. You know, safety even when it comes to furniture, particularly uh, infant furniture and, and baby uh, equipment is, is 
um, very high in the um, purchasing decisions of life uh, of consumers. Um, quality, the quality argument is always uh, there for any 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 purchase. We, we're pretty quick to point out that we are not a quality mark, we're a country of origin mark. However, quality is, is implied uh, not only with Aussie products but products that carry our logo and we're actually in the process of um, doing some research with one of the universities here to, to understand some of those other attributes that the, the logo conveys. So hopefully we'll be able to bring you that information at, at a later date. And of course value, it represents good value for money. If you're getting all these wonderful attributes uh, that a product has and you're paying a reasonable amount for it, then it's a value argument. We also acknowledge that Australia is a very high cost country, so it's a challenge and I don't have to tell some of the businesses listening here that, that it's challenging uh, for some Aussie businesses given the amount of um, often cheaper imports that come into this country. So, we think if your product's Australian that you've really got to leverage that and highlight that uh, when you sell your product. Obviously there are other criteria that consumers are going through when they decide to buy or not buy your product. So we think putting your Australian made status up front uh, is going to address that element uh, very directly and effectively. Um, so being genuinely Australian we think is a very powerful marketing and selling tool. We've got some stats to back that up. We do. We partner with our with Roy Morgan Research. We uh, obviously do the right thing. Have a third party conduct all our research. Um, and overwhelmingly, Australians are more likely to buy Australian-made products than products from other countries. You'll see there, 71% prefers to buy Australian-made. So that's an intent. So we always take that with a grain of salt. That's what they want to do. So there's a range of things that uh, businesses can do to. Um, leverage that intent um, to make make that translate into an actual purchase. We understand there's work to be done from that 71% to then drive as many of those into an actual purchase. 75% of small business owners have a preference for Australian made products and that really makes sense to us. Uh, no one feels the brunt of um, I guess uh, purchasing choice than small business. Um, they can get a big order or miss a big order and that can uh, affect their bottom line um, you know, drastically. And again, possibly not surprising, 89% of farm owners have a preference for buying Australian made products. And that extends to similar figures in the regions where there's a bit more understanding of the impact of the purchasing decision on local communities and, and so on. And then we've broken down by sector here, you'll see how likely are consumers to give preference to Australian made products when shopping. Again, Overwhelmingly, more than half, no matter what sector we're looking at here, have a, have a preference for an Aussie product. And again, the challenge is then to get that preference translating into a purchase and by at least, at the very least, telling them that your product is Australian and then again having it third party certified goes some way to helping translate that intent into a purchase. So if being Australian is important to your brand, um, What's the most effective way to convey this to consumers and businesses? And importantly, all levels of government. Um, obviously our view is the green and gold kangaroo, the Australian made logo, by far the most effective. Can be confusing for consumers and business out there. There's a whole bunch of um, uh, pretender logos is what we'll call them. And, and these, are, these are ones that companies generate themselves or other organisations. Uh, seek to position themselves as experts in, the, in these fields. That just makes it confusing for consumers, particularly when they're so used to seeing the Aussie made logo which turns 32 I think, uh, yeah 32 this year. So it's been around, it's got a ton of market capital behind it and um, uh, a point about selling overseas too, depending on the country, particularly in Asia, the map of Australia we can tell you is very, uh, is not well recognised at all. Um, so going with the map can be a little bit problematic, particularly if you're an exporter. We did a little bit of a test on this, uh, on a generic uh, unbranded uh, food product and we asked which of these labels provide you with confidence that the product is genuinely of Australian origin. Again that, that word genuine coming into it. And I'm very pleased with the results as you can see there, the Australian made logo streets ahead of uh, the other 
uh, options that were were put to the um, those uh, the Roy Morgan Research um, surveyed. So again, overwhelmingly, the logo performs or outperforms its competitors. That's something we're very proud of, and something that we we seek to maintain. And just a little snapshot on some of the benefits of branding uh, with, with the Australian Made logo. We talked about recognised uh, not only this country but uh, across the globe, so if you're an exporter, it has recognition in, in many other markets, particularly Asia, the USA, and uh, the Middle East, and some parts of Europe. It conveys that Australian message instantly, clearly, and with authority, and as we all know, we're all consumers ourselves. If we get information quickly, particularly at point of purchase, then uh, we can move on to some of the other attributes that we're assessing when we make our purchasing decisions, so the logo does that in a heartbeat. Again, that external accreditation or third-party credibility that we deliver. Differentiation in the marketplace, uh, particularly against the influx of imported goods that we find ourselves um, uh, faced with more and more of those. Um, there's potential to justify a premium because of those aspects we talked about before with uh, quality being implied and value for money. Um, and as many of you know, if you're in the export game, that uh, particularly in Asia, there's an opportunity to charge a premium in those markets. It also shows a commitment to local jobs and ethical labour practices, if that's relevant for your sector. Um, uh, provides a significant competitive advantage in export markets as well. Uh, I think I mentioned that, that depending, uh, no matter where you are, it's interesting how many um, consumers recognise a kangaroo and its association with Australia. Um, and we also try and provide a business development opportunities uh, to our licensees, which I'll talk a little bit about. Because technically we're here to administer and license uh, products, but what we also like to do is, where possible, try and provide um, new sales avenues uh, for some of those products where we can. And I should also say, it, back on the local jobs and ethical labour practices, it also represents um, ploughing money back into the local community as well. Um, so which obviously feeds into being able to employ people and businesses growing and getting bigger and better. A little bit about the logo itself, you'll see there's a number of descriptors that can be used with the logo. Australian is what we use overseas for the global brand um, and there's a number of others there. Australian made, Australian grown, product of Australia, Australian seafood and we also allow you to make an ownership statement. We don't third party certify the ownership uh, element, but we understand that it's important to a lot of businesses and consumers. So um, we have an option where you can have an, an ownership statement as well. We're also pretty flexible over here. We do something pretty remarkable for all the marketing people that we um, engage with. Are often at first surprised, but then come to understand why we allow our colours to be changed. And this is obviously so that you can adopt the logo to suit your own branding um, or marketing initiatives. Uh, we want to provide flexibility because it's the kangaroo that's the noticeable element. There we go. Um, and we talk about the national brand. Australia Made is only one of a suite of national kangaroo brands. Again, so departing from the kangaroo, um, to us, um, as I talked about with those logos with maps and other Australia fauna and fauna, a uh, flora and fauna, we think it's uh, crazy. The kangaroo is what is synonymous with Australia. Qantas take it around the world. Our logo obviously carries the kangaroo. Tourism Australia use a, a kangaroo and various other sporting groups that travel the world. So we think it's a no-brainer to stick with the kangaroo uh, and we enjoy some partnerships with some of those organisations on the screen as well. The sort of marketing message that we take to the marketplace is we say it's a consumer solution. It, it, it provides them with certainty and confidence and it's quick and easy for them to use. They trust it. It's had 32 years of market capital as I mentioned before. So it's, it's part of the furniture here in Australia and so it has, uh, that's why it enjoys that 86% trust. And so we make sure we continue to tell consumers that this is the one to look for. Local dollars back into the economies and the, and the communities as I mentioned. Um, and there are benefits to consumers for purchasing locally made products. Um, as many of you know, perhaps in the businesses you run, if you've got local support and 
customization of the products or um, they can get someone on the phone um, for aftermarket support, then that's a real benefit to many consumers depending on, on the sector and that's what being Australian conveys uh, when you make that claim. Another rogue slide, there we go. Um, I mentioned before we're supported by the business community and there, there's a bit more detail about who I'm talking about with that Australian Chamber of Commerce and Industry at the uh, national level with the state-based chambers as well and the National Farmers Federation. So really good links into uh, business community um, and the agricultural sector. We should mention also our corporate support. You'll see there we've got some of the major retailers that are, are campaign partners of ours. The, the, the supermarkets, uh, a lot of the furniture retailers, um, Qantas, as I mentioned before, Raised is our le uh, IP specialist legal firm. Um, we've got some export focused partners as well as industry associations whose uh, own constituents have a real um, uh, tie to being Australian and making Australian products. So those industry associations see real benefit in demonstrating their support for their own members. We also have local government uh, you know, involvement as well. So for the similar reasons, some of those local governments want to demonstrate to their, their, their businesses um, or the businesses in their area that they support local manufacturing and local growing um, because they understand that they're a key part of the community that um, they oversee. If you're an Australian-made licensee, you get access to not only the logo once your, your product is, is approved. As I said before, we try and offer a range of other initiatives to help you either sell your products or connect with those looking for genuine Aussie products. And so online channels is becoming more and more uh, of an avenue for many of our licensees. And so they're all provided with a, a business page and each product gets a page as well on the Australian Made website. Uh, and your products are fully searchable. We're actually upgrading the website in a matter of weeks so you'll see something very nice and uh, sl slick and, and new and very um, user friendly. So we're pretty excited about bringing that to our licensees. Um, but perhaps more importantly, when people search for products, consumers, they're searching on Google as we mo mostly do. Oftentimes, our licensee pages on our website will rank higher than the business's own website because we enjoy some really high uh, Google ranking. Um, so it, it's a really fantastic complement to your own online activities. Um, it's not some small businesses use the pages on our site as their own de facto websites. We're not suggesting that is for everyone. However, it will complement your own online uh, activities, which is what we're here to do. We're here to drive more eyeballs to your products. And that's where our digital audience that we've actively grown over the last few years. Um, you'll see that we've got over 300,000 on Facebook, uh, 12,000 on Twitter, 9,000 on Instagram, LinkedIn we've, we've got a 350 and importantly over there on the right hand side we've got 35,000 in our Aussie made club. So they're consumers that have opted in to hear about the new products, the competitions and news about Australian made and the businesses and products that carry the logo. So this is a huge audience that our licensees have access to and we don't monetize that, we don't charge for access to that. We have a schedule of course, but that if you're an Australian made licensee, you can access that group of people that we've aggregated for you. So these are people that have already got an interest in buying Australian. So there are, I guess, a more refined uh, group of uh, consumers that we've uh, amassed that have a predisposed um, preference for Australian. We also generate marketing opportunities uh, with uh, other organisations to give our licensees preferential rates uh, or exclusive access. So you'll see uh, Australia Day features that we run, um, access to trade shows and events and um, they can be here and overseas. Uh, we've done uh, uh, in both locations over, over recent years and we understand Asia is becoming more uh, uh, of more interest to many licensees. So our focus uh, is often in China. We also uh, partner with uh, the Buchanan Group and they're the group that run the Brand Power 
um, television commercials, but we've developed an Australia-made version of, of these commercials, commercials along with Brand Power. For those, these are for the licensees that are in the business of doing TV advertising. We understand that's not for everyone, so we have we have entry level um, marketing opportunities for smaller businesses. But those that are interested in in TV, then they can access the Australian-made uh, media channels, and we can. Feel, do feel free to get in touch if that's something that's of interest, um, which is essentially a call to action to buy products because they're Australian. Um, and we can provide more information on that for those that are interested. We've also, um, over the journey, had uh, Australian made logo branded stores in Sydney, Melbourne, Perth, Adelaide, and Cairns airports. There's some redevelopment going on in Sydney and Melbourne at the moment, so those ones are, uh, are not active. Uh, Perth is gone. Um, so at the moment we've got Adelaide and two in Cairns, um, and watch this space in Sydney and Melbourne. But again, a wonderful way to uh, access that tourist um, demographic that are particularly uh, on the hunt for souvenirs uh, and genuine Aussie products. So to be in these stores, you have to be a licensee of the Australian Made campaign. So again, you're in an exclusive club, which will give you potentially access uh, to another exclusive club of these airport stores. We we um, we don't run the stores; we license experts to do that, and they have the final say of which products actually get stocked in those stores. Um, so it's not a automatic entry. Um, there is still a process to go through as to whether your products are appropriate for the store or not. A bunch of exporting opportunities I mentioned before. We've got retail stores in China and South Korea, again similar to the airport stores, branded stores in those markets. Um, they're, they're generally um, online and offline versions of those stores. Um, we can provide information and guidance on putting you in touch with the right people uh, if you need a channel to market, if you're considering entering some of those um, export markets. Of course, Austrade already um, deliver these kinds of services, but we also have some other arrangements with some export partners. Um, supply chain security, I mentioned before, we're going to launch uh, some yeah, some exciting developments there, where we're going to um, hopefully help licensees add another level of security, um, particularly when it comes to securing your supply chain and product counterfeiting. Um, and we can also work with licensees to make recommendations on shipping and overseas custom clearances and things like that, which can be a bit of a challenge, uh, particularly to small business. So we, we have some recommendations we can make there. If we, if we think about China just for a, a minute, because that's where a lot of the activity in the export market is at the moment, um, we did some research um, in, in, in China about how the logo is perceived. We obviously are not for profit organisation. We've got to be careful um, where and how we spend our money because uh, we've got a responsibility to spend it wisely on behalf of our licensees. Um, we did execute a bit of um, research in um, Guangzhou and Shanghai around products that carried the Australian made logo. And 69% of those surveyed correctly identified Australia as the country of origin, which was a fantastic result given the minimal amount of money that we actually spend in, the, in that market. Um, so already you've got 70 odd percent of Chinese consumers in that particular survey that understood that that meant that products that had the kangaroo logo were Aussie. And then some of the other attributes that are conveyed, it's fantastic, was the fact that it makes that Australian connection was wonderful. Clean and green, official, very important China to be considered official, um, fresh, uh, environmentally friendly, easy, easy to understand. Again, um, that's what you want a logo to, to do. You want it to be readily, readily understood. If you have to explain the logo, the logo is not doing the job. And again, in China, the, I guess, or in parts of Asia, the fact that it's a pleasing image uh, carries some weight as well. So really, um, we were really impressed with that research, which actually was, I should explain, uh, focus groups and intercept surveys in shopping environments. Um, so, again, very pleasing results there if you're looking to go to China. And even more pleasing that uh, the products are more appealing to consumers when they carry the logo. So in those sectors, um, they, the respondents uh, indicated that the products would be even more appealing should they carry the Australian-made logo. 
Now, internally, we're not surprised by this, but hopefully this is uh, useful information um, for those that are looking to become licensees or that are already licensed to carry the logo. Just a little bit of um, uh, short, sharp case study information about why some of the companies choose uh, to carry the logo. You'll see they're a muesli company, food company. Um, conveys, you know, they think it makes an enormous, enormous difference as you see there. They want to buy Aussie food, particularly in those Asian countries. Um, they know it's genuinely Aussie and that's, that's sort of music to our ears. Uh, and that goes the same for um, those in the complementary health se sectors. Uh, they're actually, it's become a request from some of the contract manufacturers that, that make this, these sorts of products. The request comes from the brand to make sure that it uh, qualifies to make a Made in Australia claim because they want to carry the logo when they go into those. Uh, not only here in Australia, but those export markets as well. And as we stay in those export markets, you'll see it's a registered trademark in the USA, China, South Korea, and Singapore. If we stay in those export markets, you'll see it's a registered trademark in the USA, China, South Korea, and Singapore. We're also underway um, the, the process to register it in, uh, I think it's seven other markets. You'll see there Hong Kong, India, Indonesia, Japan, Malaysia, Taiwan, Thailand, and Vietnam. And they'll come on in a staggered, I'd imagine, each, each market can take short time frame or long time frame just depends on, on the market itself. But what we're doing is we're creating or extending our legal framework of the logo um, in each of those jurisdictions. So what that boils down to is that in the past if it wasn't registered in, in that market and someone copied the logo or copied your product with the logo on it, they're breaking Australian law uh, with regard to uh, the use of the logo. What's going to happen now in those markets where it's registered is they're going to break the law of that particular country. And as you can appreciate, that's a, a far bigger deterrent in some of those countries uh, than what it uh, would have been if you have to chase them here from Australia uh, with your Australian law firm. Good luck getting any kind of result. But let's take the example of China. If, the, if, your, if your product, if the logo is counterfeited in China, then they're breaking Chinese law and you can pursue them through the Chinese legal system. Still at a cost, of course, and still with your resource and your time, but much bigger chance of success. So that's the sort of value add we're trying to do to provide a little bit more security around and um, um, legal framework around the logo in those export markets. So it's pretty easy to uh, apply to use the logo. Straightforward step, you apply online at australiamade.com.au. Uh, the cost of licensing, there is a fee, it's based on your annual, annual turnover for the product uh, being licensed and essentially works out to be one tenth of one percent um, and we publish all our fees, we're very open about that. Um, it's, uh, the fees range from $300 to $25,000. The good news is you have to be turning over $45 million to register for a $25,000 fee. So if you're in $45 million territory, um, Congratulations, and um, uh, we think our fees are extremely fair and, and, and reasonable. And we, as I said, we publish them. We don't hide the fact that we, we charge a, a fee to administer this logo. So what happens next? Our compliance team assesses your application. Um, that includes an, a, a, a warranty and indemnity document, basically, that ties the, the, the business to the claim they're making. Um, if we require an audit or need to come and see if your process is particularly complicated, there might be a site visit, but normally not. And once you're approved, you can carry the Australian Made logo and begin to use it. Uh, rest assured, we do audit as well to ensure compliance, and that's why we enjoy those levels of trust, as I mentioned before, because we continue to make sure that the logo is only used on genuine Aussie products. So I hope that's been helpful for everyone today. We're very happy uh, to take questions um, online and offline after this event. So I think we've got one coming through. Um, Tony G has asked, um, if a company imports corn kernels from the US and makes popcorn here in Australia, would that be considered Australian made? Um, that is a good question, Tony. Um, I won't go on record and answer that. I would throw that to our compliance team. 
I suspect not. Um, that falls into the new food labelling scheme, though, as well, if it's for sale here in Australia. And as I mentioned, we, won't, we don't administer the scheme for food because it's a, a government initiative now. Um, a very good question. My feeling is it would not qualify. Um, but very happy if Tony wants to call um, the Australia Made campaign. Um, we will have a chat to him, even though we won't license his product unless it's for export. Well, we can still do that for him. Uh, but we can provide him some understanding around um, that particular issue. It's a very good question, Tony. Um, we've got one other question at this point. Um, can we use a logo if we import the packaging? Um, and absolutely, yes, you, you, you can, providing that the product is substantially transformed. As, as long as you meet all the other, the other single criteria, the packaging doesn't come into it uh, for us. Um, and one final question here. Um, can we use the logo if our products are made overseas using all Australian components? And unfortunately, no. Uh, we can't license unless you're actually um, making the product here, even if it is all Australian ingredients or components uh, overseas, um, and made overseas. So thanks again for everyone who uh, attended today. Again, very happy to take additional questions uh, offline, so feel free to uh, call in on 1800 52350, I say with some hesitation. Um, otherwise, 03 9686 1500, uh, the 1800 number is free, of course. Um, very happy to um, take your questions and have further discussions. Uh, but again, thank you to the New South Wales Business Chamber uh, and thank you for everyone for attending today. Uh, have a great rest of the day. Thank you, Jeff. Thank you, Ben, for your presentation and thank you to everyone for attending today's webinar. Have a great afternoon.